Okay, this is your first visit, so we're gonna need a little medical history. Name? Sheila Falanke. Height? Five foot three. Weight? 115. <laughs> Pound? Of course, pounds. <laughs> okay, what do you say we just hop right up on this scale here? I just weighed myself this morning. I'm sure you did, but doctor scales tend to be a touch more precise. I have that exact scale at home. I'm sure you do, but I'd like to check. No. Guess a lollipop's not gonna help. Nope. Lemon meringue pie? Don't get smart. You're afraid to get on that scale, aren't you? What would I be afraid of? I'm sure I don't know. That's between you and gravy. Gra 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 gra. I don't appreciate your attitude. You're a chicken. Or do you just want one? Is that the scale you want me to get on? It is that scale you want me to get on? This is the scale you want me to get on because I can get on that scale no problem. I'm on the scale. I'm on the scale. I'm on the scale. One fifteen, it is. I was feeling so bad. I smiled, found my doctor just what I had. I said, Doctor. Doctor, doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a doctor in the house? Yes. Okay, back in ten, Elizabeth. Doc, what? <laughs> Left your underwear at my place last night. Did you bring them with you? I want those back. Not without a kiss. In four, three, two. Hi, I'm Elizabeth McQueen, sitting in for Pia Bismarck, who's on vacation. We'll have all of the news, sports, and weather, as well as a special glimpse at adult acne by our own Dr. Michael Stratford. But first, <laughs> a special surprise. Congratulations, Dr. Stratford. You've just been named one of Providence's most eligible bachelors. <laughs> what? It says right here in Rhode Island Monthly. Bull. <laughs> it says here, eligible bachelor number four. We'll tell you all about the top three and more after these commercial messages. We're out! Oh, my God. <laughs> this picture was supposed to be for a fashion spread. Young doctors in tweed or something like that. <laughs> What's the big deal? I think you look adorable. Adorable? What's wrong with adorable? Well, I thought you, of all people, could at least stretch to... Dashing. <laughs> all right, darling, you're dashing. Phone call for you, Mr. Selleck. Hello? Oh, hi, Michelle. Hi, I haven't talked to you in months. <laughs> you saw that, huh? Oh, the, uh, the Boston Symphony? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I'm gonna have to pass there. No reason. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, you too. Right, bye-bye.
plays the oboe. <laughs> That's it. I am firing my publicist. Calm down, Grant. Your nostrils are flaring. Oh, don't tell me you're not bitter, Butterfield. I'm happy for him, Lenowitz. You should be happy for him, too. If he saved a life, I would be happy. You know, if his book sold better, I would be happy. No, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> That's true. I hate it when my friends succeed, you guys. It makes me look bad. Red letter day, red letter day. Copies for everyone. Oh. Grant, you're really gonna get those hemorrhoids looked at. I don't have hemorrhoids. Oh, not from this angle. <laughs> Magazine, right? Well, what does he expect? Women are just gonna throw themselves at me because I'm in a periodical? What, you haven't had any offers yet? It's been four hours. <laughs> Guess I've had a few calls, maybe a wink or two. Does a woman throwing her bra at me from a moving car count? In your dreams. In my coat. <laughs> Dr. Stratford, there's a woman waiting to see you. Says it's an emergency. Oh, this life or death stuff really cramps my style. Don't look at me. I don't wear underwear. <laughs> okay, what seems to be the trouble here, Miss North? <laughs> the, nur the, nurse, the nurse said it was an emergency. <laughs> well, it, it isn't exactly an emergency. More of a, a dilemma. I wasn't sick, but I wanted to meet you. Look, it's North. Leslie. <laughs> Legsley. Leg <laughs> Les Leslie. The people that come in, in this office are sick. They need my help. <laughs> this office is not a singles bar? Oh, no. This office is not a den of iniquity? No. This office is... Three blocks from my apartment? Three blocks from <laughs> I'm a doctor. But look, white coat, tongue depressors, big Q-tips, bras for cows. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have taken up your time. Um, but uh, in case you ever change your mind, here. I guess I just saw your picture and got carried away. I understand. <laughs> This, this woman on my right is, is sucking a jawbreaker. Thank you. Really loud. It was really annoying. In fact, it was so loud and so annoying, I really wanted to move seats, but the, the theater was packed. All of a sudden, she starts choking. The candy was stuck in her throat. I realized at that point it was man against jawbreaker. The jawbreaker was just ahead. So I reach over. I give her some Heimlich. Pops right out. God, the, the power to save a life, it just does something to me. It makes me tingle. Really? She's choking. She's flailing. She's gasping for life. All of a sudden, that play seemed very, very unimportant to me. Just then, a man in the front row jumps up and he yells, Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> the play comes to a complete halt. All of a sudden, 
Glenda Jackson runs to the front of the stage and cries out, A woman is dying! Is there no one here who has the power to save her? And there was. I still have that program with Glenda's tear-stained, unabashed, unrestrained thanks scrawled across it. I think it's in an old shoebox somewhere. What are you talking about? I was with you. Women in love? It was a movie. The woman next to you had hiccups. Details. You know, Mike, you still haven't told me what you've been doing all week since the magazine came out. Real estate, business meetings, hockey, lamb chops. Hockey, lamb chops, soup for you, and for Dr. Mike, country pate. Oh, you always number your appetizers? Actually, that's my number. Actually, that's my pate. You can call me anytime. I have a machine. I bet you do. <laughs> hey, the guy's an eligible bachelor. He's been here every night this week. I just figured I'd take a shot. Gee, that makes me feel great. You're jealous. I think that's cute. I'm not jealous. I'm confused. I had a date with Mike Stratford, and I don't know what this is. Come on, it's the new and improved model. I like the old model, the one who didn't shellac his hair. <laughs> the one I had all to myself. Well, come on, Elizabeth, you're very special to me. I'm just another girl on your list. No, you're not. Oh, hi. Jan, isn't it? <laughs> Elizabeth, where are you going? Come on, you haven't even touched your pate. I didn't want to eat the number of your next date. Oh, come on, what are you talking about? You can barely read it. Oh, take a closer look. <laughs> I can't for the life of me make out whether that's a six or an eight. Sam, must you always shout? It's what stage managers do, Liz. It's an ancient craft. My grandfather taught me. His grandfather taught him in three, two... Wake up, Providence. I'm Elizabeth McQueen, sitting in for Pia Bismarck, who's still on vacation. <laughs> Introduce me. <laughs> Introduce me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Stratford, the man who needs no introduction. <laughs> Today's subject is taking the temperature of your temper. Come with me, won't you? <laughs> when you're angry, do you stew silently, knuckles white, back hunched, teeth clenched? If this is how you react to anger, Physical violence may cross your mind. But since you can't punch a real person, otherwise you'd go to real prison. <laughs> a little joke there. <clears throat> you need to relieve tension with a viable substitute. Come with me, won't you? Hello there, Mr. Airhead. Well, at last, I've met somebody with less hair than I've got. Hi, Telly. Where's your Tootsie Roll, Pop? <laughs> I feel much better now. Well, Ms. McQueen, you look a mite peeved. Perhaps you'd like to relieve a little tension. So she's practically purring into the phone, right? Yeah. I and mean, we are talking seduction city here. I love that crazy town. <laughs> and then the subject of house calls comes up in a big way, if you know what I mean. Hey, I went to med school. And then she says to me, don't forget your tongue depressor. <laughs> <laughs> she said that? Yeah, she did. She really said that? <laughs> well, then what happened? 
Nothing happened. She thought I was Mike. I had to take a message. I wonder what that tongue depressor was for. Doctor's high five. Cha cha cha. You got your mojo working, Mike? Richard, my brother is a mojo Abe. I am Harry Hetro. Your message is Dr. Hetro? <laughs> Ow. And there's a dame waiting at the front desk. She wants you to fill this with your sperm. All of them? No, just the good swimmers. And hurry. She's double parked. I can't form a meaningful relationship with a vial in 20 minutes? Why not? It's got more personality than the bimbos you've been dating. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Deirdre, do I detect some movement on the bitterometer? You're damn straight. Guess who spent most of last night watching Janet Crewson drive the porcelain bus after eating some bad sushi? But Janet's my patient. Why didn't the service call me? Oh, they did, Mike. Several times, actually. Do the words beep, 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 beep mean anything to you? The Roadrunner's coming. <laughs> You were on call, Mike. What's the matter? Didn't have your beeper with you? Oh, I guess I was out of range. Oh, come on, Mike. Where were you, man? <laughs> Excuse me? Now we hop over to Bean. Say what? I was in a hot air balloon, okay? A hot air balloon, Mike? You're not the kind of guy to be up in a hot air balloon. I am. Oh, come on. What about me? I mean, last night was the first night in three weeks Steve ducked out on his wife, and then this happens. Oh, I'm sorry I got in the way of your adultery, dear drops. It's not like I've never covered for you guys. Oh, now you're blowing it, Mike. Hester Stein from the New England Medical Board called. On a medical conference, I completely forgot. Yeah. Guess who covered for you? What about last Friday when Raymond Athanasio was around here looking for you? Oh, wait a minute. Raymond is a hypochondriac. There's never anything wrong with him. I don't even build the guy. Yeah, well, I did. Oh, God. Deirdre, let me explain. No, I don't have time for explanations, Mike. I have patience. All I know is ever since you've been in that magazine, you've been worthless. She's right, Mike. I don't really think I've changed. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth thinks so, too. Elizabeth who? Elizabeth McQueen. Producer of Wake Up Providence. Used to be your old girlfriend. Still has the keys to your apartment, I think. Well, when did you talk to her? Over dinner last night. Man, I can't believe you called her behind his back. I didn't. She called me. She didn't. Did. Couldn't. Could. Wouldn't. Would. Did. Would. Could. Uh, besides, you're too busy for Elizabeth anyway, aren't you? Hockey and lamb chops? Pet names already? <laughs> Which one are you? Lamb chop. <laughs> <laughs> How could Elizabeth call? You know you're right, Mike. Elizabeth should sit at home and wait until you're finished playing Hickory Dickory, Doc. That's just a phase I'm going through. Well, Mike, maybe Elizabeth is ready for a little commitment. What are you talking about? I'm committed to her. Oh, yeah? As committed as you are around here? Hold this. <laughs> it's good to see you again, Mike. Elizabeth, it's me. This is the fourth message that I've left, so I'm, I'm guessing that you're screening your calls. Either that or you're out with some guy. Some guy named... Bob. <laughs> Very handsome in a Bob-esque sort of way. Got lots of Bob hair. Probably having a Bob. Probably owns a Bob boat. <laughs> and you're on it, Elizabeth. Just a minute. Sea is calm. 
Your calm, Bob, is really very calm. Everyone is calm. <laughs> Everyone except me, Elizabeth! I'm not calm! Because I see a storm brewing. The waves are lapping, and Bob bumps his stupid Bob head. He falls overboard, and he begins to... Bob! <laughs> you panic. You're scared. You want to call a doctor. You want to call me because I'm a doctor. I'm fine as busy. Oh, I should hang up. And what if I do? You're not trying to call. I'm not. Elizabeth. I just came to return your keys. What are you talking about? Come on. Can't we at least talk about it? Okay. Talk. I, I know what you're thinking. Oh, whoa, you don't know what I'm thinking. Yes, I do know what you're thinking. I behaved badly. I was a jerk. And now you don't want to see me again. Unless I beg. Besides that, you hurt me. Yeah, well, you went out with Grant. Look, Mike, you have a right to date whoever you want. I'm just not going to pick a number and wait in line. Elizabeth, I'm sorry. You have to understand what this was like for me. I've never had girls chase me before. I always felt like a nerd with four eyes, a string bean. Now I am a nerd. I am a four eyes. I look like a pear. <laughs> you have no idea how difficult it is to attract women when you're either a fruit or a vegetable. I'm still angry at you. I'm still angry at me. I don't know how I could treat you the way I do knowing the way I feel about you. How do you feel about me? <laughs> um... Um, I'm not very good at this. Um, how do you tell somebody that you... love them? How do you do it? I buy new underwear. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. How about just saying the words? I'd buy new underwear. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.